Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Multi Hooping and Pinpoint Placement webinar. We're so excited to have you tuning in with us. I'm going to go ahead and start out by opening a poll for you all to answer. Here's the first question of that. Uh, you should see that popping up. There we go. Uh, a few announcements before um, I close the poll and before I introduce our presenter. If you have any questions, you can post those in the questions pane, which is to the right side of your screen on your control panel. You can post those anytime throughout the presentation. We'll try and get most of them answered at the end there and throughout the presentation as well. This uh, webinar is being recorded for you, so in case you miss anything or want to go back and review it, you will have access to it uh, in a few days when it is posted to Bernina.com. I am going to go ahead and introduce our presenter for today, our Bernina educator, Debbie Lashbrook. Hi, Megan, and thank you, and welcome, everyone. Have you gotten the results back for the poll yet? Yes, Megan? I have. I have the results from the first poll. Um, if you've ever uh, done multi hooping before, you had 38% said yes and 62% said no. Okay. And would you like me to do the second one? Yes, go ahead and do the okay. second question. Perfect. So the second question should be out here. There we go. All right. All right, go ahead and close that one. And the results for that one, if you have a machine with pinpoint placement, you had 81% say yes and 19% said no. Okay, thank you, Megan. And is my yeah. screen showing now? Uh, let me, no, let me make you the presenter, sorry. <laughs> I forgot to do that. <laughs> there we go. Thank Perfect. you, Megan. You're good, yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, welcome everyone. And in today's webinar, we're going to talk about pinpoint placement and how it can help you align designs when you multi-hoop. And multi-hooping is a design that requires more than one hoop in order to complete the design. We're going to look at different ways to multi-hoop and uh, some of the decisions that need to be made when you multi-hoop. And we'll talk about the different options that you have when you're deciding how to complete your multi-hooping -hoop design. And even if you don't have a machine that does have pinpoint placement, there are other methods that will allow you to, to use multiple hoops to create a large design. So we're going to discuss what multi-hooping is and then review some of the ways that software can help you when you have a design that goes beyond the boundaries of the hoop. So our topics, what is multi-hooping? We're gonna talk about multi-hooping goals and facts and some decisions that need to be made. We'll talk about different scenarios of designs for multi-hooping and then specifically about pinpoint placement. So what multi-hooping is, is actually when you, it takes multiple hoops in order to complete a design that goes beyond the boundaries. And some of the goals of multi-hooping would be that you want to accommodate that design with the minimum number of hoopings. Let's face it, nobody likes to hoop. Um, I've hardly ever met anyone who says, oh, I just love to multi-hoop. Um, so we, we don't want to do 10 hoops when we could do a lot fewer hoops, for example. It's also important that you create maximum overlapping of your hoops, and that helps you be more accurate when you multi-hoop. Then, of course, we want to maintain the stitch order of a design because we don't want parts of the design to stitch on top of what should be the top layer of a design. And then you do not want to be able to see the seam or the juncture where the design comes together. So you want this to be a seamless design. Some multi-hooping facts. First of all, the software does a very good job. Our software does a, an excellent job with multi-hooping designs because it is going to not cut through an object that can be stitched within one hoop. And here you see a design that has been multi-hooped 
And this pink line represent, represents the split knife that goes through this design. And even though I digitized this so it would go through this starfish that you see in the background, when the software split the design, the star was stitched in total because it fell within the boundaries of the hoop that you see, this red hoop. So the software is going to maintain the integrity of objects in our object-based software as best as it can. Only one size of hoop can be used when you're setting your hoops in the software. And this is going to be chosen through the show hoop icon on the software screen. But when you are stitching a design, it's perfectly fine to use different size hoops if you want. You just can't use those uh, different size hoops when you're setting up the design in the software. Another multi-hooping fact that the software does maintain stitching order and this can be kind of confusing sometimes when you're working in the software and multi-hooping because there's a difference between hoopings and hoop positions. And as you see on this screen, I have placed three hoops for this design. But when I calculate the number of hoopings, I have actually five hoopings. So I use the same hoop position a couple of times in this, and that is because the design is maintaining the correct stitch order. If it didn't do this, then we'd have parts of the design stitching on top of another part, and we want this the stitching order to be maintained. All of our hoops are color-coded as they're placed, and so here you see the color-coded co order. So a red hoop is your first hoop that's placed, then a blue hoop, then a green hoop, et cetera. If you use more than eight hoops, then the software will repeat the order of colors. Another multi-hooping fact is that the first hooping, for the most part, the software is gonna place as much of the design as possible in that first hooping. So if you look at this design, in the lower left, this is the red hoop, is the first hoop that I placed. And even though I placed the hoop in this order, the design was split. So this first part was stitched before this second part. So this is the actual way it's going to be stitched. The first hooping is going to have more of the design in it than the second hooping. Another multi-hooping fact, and this is particularly in the case of older machines, because with multi-hoop designs, you're going to be sending that um, manually centered design to a machine that automatically centers your design. So you're going to get a red hoop ring around the design, as you see here, because there are parts of this design that are outside the boundary. And even though you get this message, by using the move motif icon, you can move that design back into the within the boundaries so that you will be able to stitch this design out. Now, this happens particularly in older machines where um, they, we, we do not have off-center positioning. So, I'm talking about the 830s, the 200, the 730, you're going to get this message. On newer machines that have off-center positioning, you can go into the settings and then select embroidery settings and then click on off-center positioning. And you want to activate this. And this is that same design that shows the design all within the hoop boundaries. So if you activate off-center positioning, and then send that manually centered design to the machine that automatically centers, it's going to not give you that red boundary. But even if you did get the red boundary, you can still use move motif to get that design back within the hoop boundary. Now, another multi-hooping fact about the software, the 
areas of the design that are covered and that will stitch are going to be displayed in green. And so when you first switch to the multi-hooping toolbox, all uncovered objects are going to be displayed in black. And that will help you place your hoops so that you can get the design totally covered by hoops. And then you will usually want to print a template to help you when you are aligning those designs. You will always print at 100%. And this is obvious. It will do you no good to make the design smaller so that it gets within the hoop. So you always need to print at 100% because that's what you're going to be dealing with when you are using this design. Now, when you check hoop template, and usually you will want to check that because it helps to have that plastic grid on top so you can see where the design actually falls within the hoop. Sometimes it will take you more pages to print the design, but you tape them together. It's very easy to tape that template together. If you check design information, it's going to require more pages to print. So this is something I usually don't check because I really don't need it. And then artistic view generally is going to show up better than design view. Keep in mind that if you're working with a very light colored design, you may want to recolor the design before printing the template, and that will help it be more clear and more visible for you. Now, let me back up here and show you this particular area in the print options, hooping sequence. If I want individual templates to print so that I have one print, one uh, template for the first hoop and another template for the second hoop. I can print individual templates if I want, but it's really not absolutely necessary with pinpoint placement. Sometimes I will print the individual templates if I've got a tight fit of designs within the hoop. Sometimes it helps to have that extra page printed or pages printed. Also, if I'm doing a diagonal hoop, I like to print the individual templates because it, it's just easier for me to figure out how the hoop needs to be placed. And keep in mind that when you do have thumbnails checked, it um, will only print in design view. So sometimes I like to actually print out the individual uh, files and I'll save those individual files so I can print them in artistic view and it makes them makes it easier for me to see the designs within the hoop. Next let's look at the multi-hooping toolbox. You can select a hoop either in the multi-hooping toolbox or through the view menu in, in the software. And we do have a feature in version 8 and this is new it was new in version 8 it is not in version 7 and this is automatically add hoops so when you check this the software makes all the decisions for you it will split the design it rotates the hoops if necessary it places the number of hoops for you that you're going to need and it calculates the number of hoopings for you so it basically the software is making all the decisions for you. If you choose to manually place hoops, then you have all these options down here where you can add hoops to the design. When you add hoops to the design manually, you may need to add a splitting line. And then you definitely want to calculate your hoopings as well. Multi -hooping Multi-hooping options can be set up either in the multi-hooping toolbox or in your general toolbar in the software. And then preview hoopings allows you to see the way the design was split, whether you automatically add hoops or whether you manually add the hoops. So decisions that you need to make when you multi-hoop. First of all, do I want to automatically add hoops or do I want to manually place my hoops? 
that is um, one of the first decisions that you're going to be making. And normally, I will just see what the software does. So I'll click on automatically add hoops in the, the, at the very beginning just to see how the design is split. But sometimes we want more control of our decisions. And in that case, I would manually place the hoops. And in the exercise that we're going to be working through in a minute, I'll do the automatically add hoops first, and then I'm going to show you some other options for manually placing your hoops. Then when you um, align those hoops, you have choices of alignment. First of all, there's registration marks. And in the old days, with our first embroidery machine, that was our only choice. That's all we had. So if you're working with a 180 or a 200 or some of the older six series machines, that's the only way you can uh, align your, your multiple hoops. With the newer machines, and the absolute check came on with the 830, and machines since the 830 do have absolute check. And that's another way to align them. And we'll cover that in just a minute so that you understand exactly what absolute check is. Pinpoint placement is on the very newest machines and more our top of the line machines. So the 880 plus, the 790 plus, and the 590 have pinpoint placement. So how um, another third decision that we need to make is how are we going to send and save the designs? It is always important to save the total file that is not split. So you want to always save that combined art file so that you can go back in and edit it if it needs to be edited. Now, you have a choice either to keep that, you take that saved total file and send it to the USB stick without saving the separate files, and that's perfectly fine. That's the way I usually do it. But you can also save machine files in addition to that combination file. And a little bit later, I'll tell you when I might save the individual files. But for the most part, if you save that combined file, there's no sense taking up extra memory on your computer to save the machine files. So let's talk about automatically adding hoops. So in this design, I added the hoops automatically. The software looked at the design, it placed the design, it rotates the hoops if necessary, so all the design can fit within the boundaries of the hoop. It automatically splits the design, it automatically calculates the number of hoopings that I'm going to need for this design. Now let's say I didn't wanna work with these rotated hoops, and that may be a decision that you're gonna to need to make some, some time when you multi-hoop. I can manually place the hoops. And if I want to work with all vertical hoops, you can see how I've placed all the hoops vertically. This area is still black, even though it fits within all my hoops, because it is one total object. And remember the software doesn't, when you manually place hoop, the software doesn't automatically split that object. We do have an object-based software, which makes it much easier to edit designs. But what that means is I have to go in and add a manual splitting line in order to get this design so it will all stitch out. Now, if I backtrack up um, to this former slide, you see how the software placed this hoop automatically at an angle so it could accommodate that one entire object within one hoop. But when we manually place hoops, we might not automatically be able to do this. So I have to add a splitting line. And when I added this splitting line, which is this pink line that you see with two left clicks and pressed enter, the object was split and now the design is all green. So whether you choose to automatically add hoops or manually place hoops, that's really totally up to you.
when you do this, you always have to, when you manually place hoops, that is, you always have to calculate hoopings. So in the toolbox, I would click on calculate hoopings. The amount of time it takes to calculate the number of hoopings will vary depending on the type of design. The software is faster when we're working with pure art files. But if we're working with a foreign format like a PES design or a DST, then it may take longer to calculate and actually split the designs. If you get more hoopings than you want, you can try moving the hoops closer together. You can try rotating the hoops. And sometimes this will decrease the number of hoopings. Keep in mind that if certain objects are not covered, you're going to receive a warning. So you see in this uh, dialog box, it says some objects in the design are not covered by hoops. So the software is seeing some little bit of the design that's not included in those hoops. As far as alignment options, we can align by registration marks. And again, older machines, that's, that's the choice that you have. You're going to have to use those registration marks. They can be automatic or you can manually add reg registration marks. You can also use absolute check if your machine has that, or you can use pinpoint placement. I'll go into the differences between absolute check and pinpoint placement in a minute. So with registration marks, if we let the software add them, this is set up in options, and you need to have a check mark by add registration marks on output. And then you have three different margins that you can choose, small, medium, and large. You also have basting stitch markers that are found in the digitized toolbox. And these can be chosen and you can use those as registration marks instead. Now, if you're going to use basting stitch markers, you'll want to deactivate the add registration marks on output because you don't need all those. And then you can also digitize your own markers with the open object tool. The automatic registration marks, as I mentioned, can be small, medium, or large margins. And what this means is the distance the registration mark is from the hoop. This red X that you see in each of these hoops is a registration mark and then the one down at the bottom of the hoop. And that's what's used to help align the two different hoops that you see. If it's a small distance, it's closer to the margin of the hoop. Medium is medium distance, and then large is further from the hoop. With large distances, it's easier to get the registration marks as well as the design within the hoop boundaries without getting that red hoop message that sometimes you get. With a small margin, you might have, be more likely to get that out of, out of the hoop message, but it is more accurate than a large distance. So medium is the default, and that's usually what you're going to use. Now, these are the registration marks that you see circled in red, and if you have those registration marks activated, they are automatically added. You have, you don't have to do anything. You don't place those registration marks. They just show up. And they are generated on output of a design, which means you won't see them in the total design. But if you export that machine file, or once you split that design by sending it to a USB stick, that's when those registration marks show up. Now, the advantage of using the automatically generated ones is that if I open up my combined design and decide I want it a little bit larger, when I enlarge that design, the registration marks are automatically moved for me. I don't have to go in and physically move them. So that's an advantage. They are longer stitches, so they're easy to remove because they will need to be removed from your project. When you digitize registration marks, and if you do edit the design, you may have to tweak those registration marks that you have manually added. So keep that in mind. 
the registration marks cannot be moved. So the ones that are automatically generated, you can't tweak those at all unless you go in and change the margin. There are two sets generated with your registration marks. And here you see on the first tubing, the red registration marks will stitch after this first design stitches. Then when you rehoop your fabric, the green registration marks stitch first. So you can use these green marks to align with the two corresponding red marks. And then the rest of the design hopefully will align. And I say hopefully because even though the registration marks are absolutely check out and you've, you've made sure that the um, needle penetrations are exact, because fabric, there's push pull in fabrics, um, there could be, uh, the, the fabric is gonna draw in a little bit. So even those registration marks, if they accurately align, by the time it gets to the point of stitching that second design, there may be some distortion. So registration marks are not as accurate as the other methods that we have to align designs. For those machines that have absolute check, you're gonna find that this is a more exact way. And if you do not understand what absolute check means, when you touch a part of the design on the screen of your machine, the needle will automatically move to that point when absolute check is activated. So you can lower the needle and check to make sure that that needle penetration is where it needs to be on the part of the design that is already stitched. So when you use absolute check as a means of aligning designs, you want to look at your design and identify key points in the design that need to match. Now, absolute check only works one point at a time, so you can check multiple places on a design that have to be aligned, but if they don't all exactly match, I have to guess if I have to move the design a little bit or maybe rotate the design a little bit. So let's look at this same design where we added registration marks. And let's look at critical areas of alignment. So here you see the blue arrows on the slide that show you some of the key areas that need to be aligned in this design so that it can stitch out without you noticing, oh, that's where the design came together. So you wanna zoom in when you're using absolute check. And remember what you're looking at in your second hooping is what was stitched, but on the screen, you're looking at what will stitch. And you can look at the templates to help you when you decide how to align the designs. So here you see the needle penetration is here with this single line of stitching. And this is where I touched on the screen to get that needle position to move to that point. So you'll zoom in and make sure that you touch right there on screen. And now I can move that needle position after I raise the needle, of course, um, I use move motif to align that particular point. Then I'll go to the second area of alignment and check. And I do have to guess at that point to see if it aligns. Now with pinpoint placement, we can actually use two points and we don't have to check each point individually. We align the two points and the machine automatically will rotate the design if necessary after we set those two points. So when we actually work in the, um, a little bit later in the slide set, I'll show you how this is done with our design. So in this particular design, these are the two points that are very critical that they align with this design. So those are the two points I would choose. And then if I didn't hoop exactly perfectly, 
the software would rotate those design or that design so the second design would align seamlessly. You also have two saving options. You can do a file save as. This saves the design as a pure art file and saves it as a combined design. So all the hoops are in a single design file and all I have to do to separate that design is click on the write to card machine icon, the sewing machine icon, and that will send the individual files to my USB stick. There's no need in most cases to save those individual files. But if I do want to save those individual files, I'll go to file export machine file, and that will save the split files individually on my computer. Sometimes when I am working in a file, it splits out travel stitches separately from what might be uh, a travel stitch from one object to another. And it doesn't make sense that they're, they're put in the first file. That, so I'll take that travel stitch and I will pull it off one file and put it in another file. If I want to do something like that, I am going to save the individual files first. And that, that way I can pull the one stitch out of the one file and put it in another. But for the most part, you can do this first, first method and it will work fine. So you, whether or not you export individual files or whether you just send the designs to a USB stick, you always, always want to save that pure art format because that's going to give you more editing capability. That design file with all the different hoops is saved as a single design file, and this is your master file. Once a design is split, it becomes a stitch file, and you don't have as much editing capability. So save your designs as pure art. So let's get on with talking about multi-hooping scenarios. So these are different types of multi-hoop designs that you may come across. And we'll, we'll cover these, and I've got an illustration for each one of these. This is one of the easiest forms to multi-hoop. And here you've got a design that they're individual contained designs that span over a large area in a project. For example, if this was a table runner. The designs don't connect, they won't all fit in one hoop, but they're also, there's no overlapping areas. So you just use the center of the design, align it with the center of the hoop, and it will require multiple hoopings, but you really don't need to use the multi-hooping function in the software to do this, this, this type of design. Another case where you may need to multi-hoop is where the designs are space close enough together that you could stitch out two of the designs in one hooping, but you can't fit all of the designs in one hooping. So there's no real critical areas that are going to have to match because you can hoop these designs together, for example, these designs together, and then this one design. So you want them to be spaced evenly, and in this case, I would use automatically add hoops. I'd let the software determine how to split it, and I would use registration marks to align because I'm not splitting through this design at all. They're, each design is a separate component. I would print a full template that would help me in hooping the design. Then you may have a continuous border design, such as this that re may repeat down a quilt border or around a garment or down the center of a tablecloth, for example. And here's where I would use the insert markers at the start and the end of each of these designs. So if your design or if your machine has continuous embroidery function, this can be automatically done for you in the machine and you don't need to use multi-hooping. But in this case, I would insert the markers at the start and end of the design and I would use those 
markers that are found in the digitized toolbox to do this. Here, the start and the end of the design become your reference points for aligning and not necessarily registration marks that you automatically add. This next option is what we're going to work with in our exercise today. And here, when you're using a connected design that is going to be split, you will have the best opportunity to totally align that design if you use absolute check or pinpoint placement. One step that you have to do when you multi-hoop is to calibrate your hoop. And you need to calibrate your, um, the hoop that you're going to use to the machine before stitching the design. And this is especially important with designs that span the width of the hoop, because otherwise you're more likely to get an out of hoop message if the hoop isn't calibrated. So you'll use the hoop with the plastic template to calibrate. And I would calibrate the large oval hoop if that's the hoop I was going to use. And that's what I did use for this elephant design. To calibrate the hoop, you'll go to settings on your machine embroidery settings, and then click on calibrate hoop. And the plastic insert is inside the hoop and the needle position goes to the center of the hoop. And you can see that this is a little bit off. So I'll use my arrows to get that so that the needle goes into the center, a hole of the plastic template. And then I click on confirm. Other multi-hooping aids that you might want to grab a hold of before you multi-hoop a design is the hoop template, which is the clear plastic insert. This is used to align the grain line in your, on your fabric before you stitch. You also want to print the design template. And again, normally just the entire design can be printed. You don't need to print the separate design templates. I also use a double stick tape and the brand that I normally use is called Wonder Tape. And this will help adhere the hoop to the fabric. And then a master hooper, if you have one, is a great hooping aid with multi-hooping as well as just hooping designs. The master hooper looks like this. And the advantage of this is that when you put that outer ring of the hoop, on the brackets that are in the master hooper, it does not it does not move when you're trying to insert the inner hoop. So it makes it for a, a very easy way to hoop your fabric. I'll prepare the hoop by placing the double-sided sticky tape on the wrong side of the inner ring. So I I'll put it on each side of that inner ring, and then I peel away the paper, and you can see the sticky tape. And usually you can use this two to three hoopings before you're going to need to replace it. Then I want to mark my fabric, and I'm doing a horizontal and a vertical line down the center of the fabric. And I'll take the paper template, and I want to cut both in the vertical as well as the horizontal direction, the design center as well as the center of the first hooping. And this is clearly marked on your template. You'll be able to see that in this close up. So here is the design center, and here is the center of the first hoop. It's marked by a circle ring and crosshairs. Now, I don't need to mark this second. Um, hooping center because I'm going to use pinpoint placement to align that second hooping. So I only need to mark that very first hooping center as well as the design center. I'm going to take my plastic template, put it in the hoop, and with a double sided adhesive on the wrong side of the inner ring, I can align my template with the mark of the first hooping center. And I just want to make sure that my grid lines on my plastic template are parallel. And in this case, it is right on that horizontal mark, but it's going to be slightly off from the vertical mark. And I'm going to align it with the center of the 
um, first hooping of my design. And then I'm going to press along the edges to make sure that that sticky tape adheres to the fabric. Then I'm going to pick up my fabric with the inner hoop and place it in the outer hoop. Now make sure that your outer hoop ring is loosened enough so that you don't have to push the fabric in because you're not going to be as likely to, to distort the fabric if you've got plenty of play in the outer hoop. You want to check the fabric is not skewed and you'll do that by placing the, the plastic template back on the fabric. Here the master hooper will hold that outer ring and it really helps when you're hooping the design. And remember to match the arrows. If you're going to use the template, you have to have those arrows match. The one on the inner ring will line up with the outer ring. You'll go to the machine and select the first split design. And when it comes in, you're going to align this design just by aligning the center of the design with the center of the hoop. So I brought in this design and you can see that when I touch the align center, it's just slightly off. So the design was a little bit off and sometimes that happens when you have a thick mark. So I can use my move motif icon and I move that over just a little bit so that the needle penetrated right there in the center of my crosshatch. And then I'm going to stitch out that first design. Remove it from the hoop, and then I'll hoop the second design. And here I'm going to, again, press on the edges so that the sticky adheres to the fabric. I want to make sure my grid lines are parallel to the lines marked on my fabric. And I just want to check to make sure that that second hooping is going to fall within the boundary of my hoop. Otherwise, I'll get a, an out of hoop message and I may not have enough room to move that design. So I use the printed template to lay over the design to make sure it will fit in those hoop boundaries. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to remove and then place the uh, the hoop, the inner hoop, a little bit further over so it will accommodate that design. So here you see the inner hoop is placed in the outer hoop, the grid is parallel, and I'm ready to stitch that second part of the design. So here I'm going back to my software just to double check what are the key areas of alignment. And this view really helps. And Right here is where one critical area of alignment. So this would be what has already stitched. These two on the left have already stitched. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the two on the right have been stitched. This is the one that I'm going to stitch. So I focus in here and I need to make sure that this point aligns with this point. And then my second area for pinpoint placement would be this and this must must match. And that will make the designs uh, align seamlessly. So I'm going to retrieve my elephant design. And this is elephant design two. And here is one area. Here is the next. So those are going to be my two points for pinpoint placement. And I'm going to activate pinpoint placement by clicking on the icon. And then I want to position dots as desired. I'm not going to use the grid. I'm going to pick the two points in the design that I want to align. I'll zoom in and I'm going to touch my first match point. And I can zoom in and I can really get down and make sure that I've got that exact point that needs to match. And that is going to be my first match point. Now, when I click on that and I'm looking at what needs to align, here is the first part of my design. And I'm going to lower the needle and make sure it aligns with that point. If it doesn't, and in this case, I did move it slightly, I can use my move uh, motif 
icon and I can move it up or down or to the right or left. I can do that with the first match point. So I'm going to do that. Once it aligns, I click on set and you can see that the marker has now turned yellow, meaning it's set. So now I'm going to zoom out and then touch this second point. Again, the needle will move to that area. When it does, I can roll down my needle and check to make sure it aligns. Now at this point, if I didn't hoop exactly straight, I can move that position, but I wanna be careful either to only use the length knob and move it up and down, or only the width knob and move it right or left. And you can see I, I needed to move this slightly to the left to get it to align accurately. And then I set that stitch and stitch it out. I do want to recommend that you activate your basting frame for this second part of the design because you're going to be hooping with a little bit of bulk and um, because part of the design is going to be within the hoop and that basting frame just helps hold the fabric securely. I also want you to be aware the way I split this particular design, which you'll understand in a minute, when, when I'm stitching this, the underlay didn't come all the way over to the edge, but it, it, the fill stitch did cover this area. So don't get alarmed when this happens if you choose to split the design the way I chose. And you can see the amazing accuracy in this. So if you're wondering, and this is a handout that is also supplied to you, does my machine have absolute check or does it have pinpoint placement? This handout will verify which machines have absolute check, which, one have, which ones have pinpoint placement. Again, the difference is pinpoint placement lets you pinpoint two positions, absolute check, uh, you do one position at a time and you have to guess at how much to rotate the design. Pinpoint placement will pinpoint the two places and will rotate the design automatically if it needs to be. So let me go ahead now and let's work through the lesson in the software and then I'll open it up for questions. So, the first thing we wanna do is set the hoop and I've got the large oval hoop. And yes, this design would have used, would have worked in a larger hoop, but then you wouldn't, it wouldn't be a lesson on multi-hooping. So that's why I chose the large oval hoop. And we'll go get the design. I'm going to click on insert embroidery. This design is in the animals and bugs and it is WM. 917. I'm going to select that and click on open. And as you can see, the design is small enough. I'm going to enlarge this design and I enlarged it to 185%. And now it's outside the boundaries of the hoop. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these green colors just because I only wanted one color. And you should do any kind of editing that you want to do prior to splitting. It always works out better that way. So I'm going to choose my pick color down in the lower left hand uh, corner and I'm going to select the color that I want and then zoom in and change that second green so all the green is the same color. That's optional, of course, but I just wanted to do that to simplify the design. Now I'll go to the multi-hooping toolbox and I wanna set my options first. Now you can activate options either here or up in your general toolbar. So you'll click on this and I wanna make sure that add registration marks on output is unchecked. It is checked by default and medium is the default setting but I don't need registration marks in this case because I'm going to use pinpoint placement. When I go okay, then the software will not add registration marks. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is click on automatically add hoops. And the software is gonna look at the design, it's gonna split the design if necessary, it's gonna rotate hoops if necessary, 
and it's going to calculate the number of hoopings. And I'll click on OK. If I want to see how the design is split, I go to Preview Hoopings, and I click and hold on one part of the design, and I click and hold on the other part of the design. And this makes for a good split because all objects are going to be stitched without splitting in this case. All the elephant is stitched in one fell swoop. Sometimes this is a good way to do it. That the lesson's not gonna end here though because I'm gonna show you some other alternatives. Sometimes it's kind of confusing to work with rotated hoops. And even though there's a marker that shows you the direction of the hoop, you may want to work with vertical hoops. So I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. So I'm gonna click on the undo and I go back to my one hoop and you can see that I need to add some other hoops. So this time I'm gonna show you how to manually add hoops. So I'm gonna take this one hoop and I'm gonna move it over by clicking and dragging on that dotted line. And then I'm going to add a hoop and I'm gonna to choose to add a hoop left. And then I want to create as much overlap as possible. Now you can see that the design is still black. So it helps to go to the digitize toolbox in this case and look at color film. And if I hold down the alt key and select the gray area and alt key lets you select one object that of uh, a grouped object. So if I hold down the Alt key and select this gray and then turn to Design View, you can see that the background of that elephant is all one object. And the software is not going to split that without my adding a split line. So I'll go back to Artistic View for this. And I have some options. I could, of course, rotate a hoop. But let's say we wanted to keep this vertical. I'll go back to multi-hooping toolbox and I will add a splitting line. And for this first splitting line, I'm going to just come over here and do two left clicks with an enter. And you can see that the area is now green. So that means that all objects are fitting within one of those two hoops. I'll go over to preview hoopings to see how the design is split. So again, click and hold, and you can see part of that underlay in the bottom part of the elephant is included in the first file. And that line that goes down the edge of the elephant aligns or is to be aligned with this second area. Um, and I can't move my mouse off of the um, second hoop or I'll lose the split. But where that split is, you're going to have to be pretty accurate to have that all line up without seeing a seam. So again, I'm going to undo. And when you're deciding where to add your split, you want to look for the least conspicuous place. And here in this design, if I add my split line down through here, it's going to split the black parts of the elephant, but this green area that you see, which is kind of overstitching, will serve to hide any of that area that doesn't meld exactly perfectly. So this time when I add the splitting line, I'm going to begin with a left click, and then I'm going to come down through this area, and I will click and press enter. And again, all the elephant is green. I'll come over to my preview hoopings. Again, clicking and holding and clicking and holding. And this time the area is split underneath that detail stitching that you see in the second hoop. So that darker gray area is going to cover up anything in that first hooping. So this is the better way to split it. If you choose to have vertical hoops and you add your splitting line. Now let's talk about saving this design. I'm going to do file save as, and I'll call this design elephant. 
and click on Save. The design isn't yet split, and that saves the design all as one with the split line. And now all I have to do to split that is to click on Write to Card Machine. So when I click on that, the design is split, and I have my two separate hoopings. And you can see the match points that are important here. And if I zoom in here, this is going to be one important match point, And this will be another. So even though I split through the green, since it all fit within the one hooping, all the green objects is still within that one hoop. The only object that split is that light gray part of the elephant. So I would select that, click on Send Now. I have to select the other one, click on Send Now, and that will send the two split files to the machine to be stitched. I'm going to close that. Now, if I decide to send the split files, or if I want to save the split files, I can do File, Export Machine File. And I would navigate to the location to save those files. And notice they're now EXP files. They're no longer pure art. And when I click on Save, the software is going to ask me if I want to export one file for every hooping or export everything in one file. I, have, I have already saved it as a pure art file. So I do not need everything in one file. I will click on Yes, and it will automatically split those files again. And I can click on Save All and it will save the split files. Again, I usually don't do that because I don't really need those separate split files. I'll open up that pure art file and send it through the right to uh, card machine. Now let's go ahead and talk about printing a template and then I'll open it up for questions. So I want to go to print preview and I'll go into options and here is where I want my, um, I don't need the vector artwork. I want my start and end crosshairs because that shows me the center of the design. And I want my hoop template. I don't need design information because that just print uses extra paper. I don't need guides. And I'm not gonna click on hooping sequence either because this one printed template will be fine. So here, it, in this case, it, only, it prints on one page. In some cases, for some larger files, it may print in more than one page, and you'll have to pay, uh, tape the pages of the template together. So um, I've already talked about how it's uh, stitched out, so I am done with the software lesson. And Megan, do I have questions? You do. You have a couple of questions, and I apologize if you've answered these already, but these are what came through. First, how do you know where uh, or what two places to use for pinpoint placement? Um, actually, when I click on Write to Card Machine, that helps me because I can I can zoom in here. And by the way, this outline is off because of push pull. It's it's digitized that way. Um, so what I want is I want this point because if if my outlines don't lack line up here. If this outline that's added to the top of the elephant doesn't match with this outline, it's going to look off. So that is one key area. And, and again, here where the outline comes in, this is going to be my second point that needs to be aligned. So when you're looking at a design, you want to look at those areas that if it doesn't line up, it's going to look weird. I'm not concerned about this area in here because it's gonna be covered up by the um, detail that stitches over that area. But if the outlines don't align, it's going to look off. So that's, it's, it's gonna vary by design. 
so it, just look for the areas that it's it's going to stick out like a sore thumb and that's why i tried to give different um different designs in the slide set so you could see how i picked those areas that really if they're misaligned you're going to see it okay um, a second question, sometimes in my software, when the designs are close to filling up the whole hoop, the design shows that it will fit in the hoop, but when they bring it to the machine, they get the red hoop warning, even though they didn't change anything. Is there any idea why this happens? Yes, uh, I mentioned that in, in multi-hooping, designs are not automatically centered. They're manually centered to the way that it works within the hoop. When you send those designs to a machine, they are automatically centered unless you have a machine with off center positioning. So let me go back to the slide set a minute to show you this. Mm -hmm. I'll get there in a minute. <laughs> so this is an this is an 830. And when an 830 does not have off center positioning. So when I send that design to the machine, I see the red hoop because even though the software split the design and it all fell within the hoop, remember it's manually centered when you multi hoop. When it's sent to the machine, it's automatically centered. So some of these registration marks are just barely outside the hoop. So here is when you use your move motif to get them back so that they are right there. So all the all the registration marks, the whole entire design is within that hoop border. Now with the newer machines that have off center positioning and you can go to your settings and your embroidery settings. And if you have this icon, that's off center positioning. If you have that, then you can send the design to the machine and it will be totally within the hoop. It has to be activated in order to have that happen. But even if, if you have a newer machine and you get that red border, and just go ahead and use move motif and you can get it back so that all the design fits within the hoop. Okay, sounds great. And one final question. When do you, when do you use the grid and pinpoint placement versus two individual stitch points? I always use individual stitch points when I am multi-hooping. Okay, I think that is it. Do you have anything else you wanna add, Debbie? I think that's it. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Awesome, well, thank you. And thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. In a couple of days, uh, the recording to this and the handouts that go along with it will be available on Bernina.com. All you have to do is click on Learn and Create in the tab in the top right corner, then click on Classes and then Webinars, and you'll find all of the recordings in the uh, Recorded Webinars tab there. If you have any other questions that we weren't able to answer today, uh, you can email me or Debbie and I will pass them along and we'll get those figured out. Okay, Megan, I do have I do have one more thing I just sure. forgot. No, go um, for it. Now is the time to plan next year's webinars. So if there's if you have any bur burning desire, I um, am open to some ideas. I do have to. Ha it's going to be a quick turnaround. If you have an <laughs> idea, I need to hear from you by September 20th, and you can email me at dlashbrook at berninausa.com, and I will accommodate your suggestions as best I can. Awesome. Well, I think that's all we have. Thanks, Debbie. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.